It makes my nerdy little heart so happy that over 40 of y'all said you wanted to see a video about math. <laughs> Welcome to my channel, Crafters Autonomous here. I like to give you the knowledge and skills you need to craft it yourself. My name's Amanda, and today I'm going to be doing a video all about the math behind a crochet circle and why it matters. Some of y'all may not know this, but before I dropped out of college because of some health issues, I was a math major. Yes, I'm a total nerd like that, but I'm one of those weird people who genuinely loves math. Now I know I'm an anomaly and most people don't really like math, but don't worry, I'm going to explain the math behind a crochet circle in a fun way, and I'm gonna also explain why it matters. So let's start by going over what a circle is. We all have an intuitive understanding of a circle, like if I were to show you a circle, you'd be able to say, yes, it's a circle, no, it's not a circle. But in math terms, a circle is the collection of points equidistant from the center. Here's what that means in simple terms. If this dot is the center of my circle, and I walk some distance in some direction away from the center, where I end up will be a point on the circle. And if I walk that same distance in any direction, and I keep going until there's no gaps between these points, all those points out there will give me a circle. The easiest way to describe a circle is it's a 2D shape that's round. Now there's some terms that we like to know about circles and these terms have to do with different measurements. The first term we need to know is the radius. So if you remember from high school geometry, the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to a point on the circle. So basically if you draw a line from the center to the edge of the circle, that distance is what we call the radius. It could be in centimeters, it could be a distance in inches. If we had a ginormous circle, that distance could be in miles or kilometers. The radius is just a distance. A second important part of a circle is the circumference. It's a big word, basically just means the distance around the circle. Another way to think about it, if you were to walk around a big circle walking track, the circumference would be the distance of that track. Now many, many years ago, some very smart people figured out that there's a special relationship between the radius and the circumference, and that if you know the value of one, you can find the value of the other. And so we get this fancy formula that says the circumference equals two times the radius times pi. Now what's special about this relationship? Why does it matter? Well, if we have a value for our circumference and a value for our radius that don't fit into that formula and make it a true statement, we're not gonna end up with a circle. Another way of thinking about that is if I have a really long radius, but my circumference is too short, it's not gonna be a flat circle, we're gonna get a weird shape. That shape will be a dome. If I have a radius and then I have a circumference that's way too big for that radius, I won't get a flat circle. I will get a very roughly shape. So now that we have a basic understanding of circles and some important terms, let's talk about how it relates to crochet. I'm going to run through my explanation using the single crochet stitch, but don't worry, at the end I will talk about how this relates to some other stitches as well. If we take a look at the single crochet stitch, these stitches, we can think of them as little rectangles. And in fact, these little rectangles are almost perfect squares. So this blue swatch here is 10 single crochet stitches wide by 10 single crochet rows tall. So it's 100 stitches, 10 by 10. And when I measure this swatch, it is approximately two and a half inches wide by two and a half inches tall. And if 10 stitches wide are the same as 10 stitches tall, that means that each stitch is approximately a square. You'll notice it's slightly wider than it is tall. That'll be important later. But for now, we're gonna think of the single crochet stitch as a square. Of course, when we work in the round, it looks a little bit different than squares. We've got single crochet stitches here in the circle, but the stitches take on a little bit more of a wedge or triangle shape than a square. And that's because crochet is a fabric essentially and fabric has some flexibility. So if we pretend this swatch is a single crochet stitch, when we work in the round, what happens is the base of the stitches get bunched together. So think about working your stitches into a magic ring. After you work your stitches into the magic ring, what do you do? We cinch the magic ring tight and that takes the bases of the stitches and squishes them down together. So when we work single crochet stitches in the round, they kind of make more of a triangle shape than an actual square shape. But here's what's important. The width of the top of the stitch 
and the height of the stitch doesn't change. So the only thing that changes in the shape and measurement is the bottom just gets squished down. So if we think about single crochet stitches worked in the round, let's say we just have one round of single crochet stitches. Well, that means that the radius is going to be the height of the stitch, and then the circumference will be the width of however many stitches we put into our circle. If we look at this circle here, I've worked four rounds, but we can think of the circumference as adding up the width of the tops of the stitches. So the circumference will be the total width of all the tops of the stitches. I'm on round four, which has 24 stitches. So I would have 24 times the width of each stitch to get my circumference in this case. So that begs the question, how many single crochet stitches should we work to make a circle? Now, you've probably noticed most things worked in the round call for six single crochet stitches. Here's why. If we look at our formula for the circumference of a circle, it's the circumference equals two times pi times the radius. Now, pi is a very long number. In fact, it's what we call an irrational number that never ends. It's 3.14159265358979323846264333. I used to know it out to over 100 digits, but anyways, that number goes on for forever and ever. For simplicity's sake, let's just say that pi equals three. So then if we look at our formula, circumference equals two times pi times the radius, if we plug in the value of three for pi, we get the circumference equals two times three times the radius, and two times three is six, so we can think of the circumference of a circle as six times the radius. Yes, this is approximate, we're going through a big idea first, and then I'll talk through the technicality, so just bear with me. So if the radius of our crochet circle is the height of our single crochet stitch, then the circumference would be six times the height of a single crochet stitch. But we know that the height of a single crochet stitch is about the same as the width of a single crochet stitch. That means to get a circumference of a flat circle, we need six times the width of a single crochet stitch. Another way to think about that is, we need to work six single crochet into the round. The circumference of round one to make it a flat circle needs to be six times the radius. The radius is pretty much the same as the width of the stitch, so six times the width of the top of the stitch means we need to work six single crochet stitches into round one. Pretty cool, right? Hopefully I didn't totally lose everyone there. Hopefully we're all kind of tracking a little bit. And don't worry, if you don't totally follow, I'm gonna explain at the end why this actually matters. So even if you don't totally understand the math, I'll give you the takeaway of what's actually gonna help you. So that's round one of working single crochet, but what about when we want to work round two, round three, round four, and keep getting bigger and bigger? If we want to make a circle that stays flat, our circumference and our radius need to always work in the formula, circumference equals two times pi times the radius. Again, we're gonna keep plugging in three as our value for pi for right now, just to keep things simple. So our circumference needs to be six times the radius. So let's look at the situation here. I have the circle where I have worked four rounds of single crochet. How many single crochet do I need in round four? Well, let's think about it this way. What's our radius? A radius is from the center to the edge. And that distance is going to be the height of one, two, three, four rows of single crochet. Another way to think of it is we have the height of four single crochets. So for a crochet circle working round four, we can think of our radius as four times the height of a single crochet stitch. Since the circumference is six times the radius and the radius is four times the height of a single crochet, that means for round four, our circumference needs to be six times four times the height of our single crochet stitch. Six times four is 24, so that means our circumference needs to be 24 times the height of a single crochet stitch. Now remember, the height of a single crochet stitch is approximately the same as the width of a single crochet stitch. So that means our circumference needs to be 24 times the width of one single crochet, which means we need 24 single crochet stitches. Guess how many stitches I worked for round four? You got it, I work 24 single crochet. So here's the secret little formula. Because of the math of a circle, every round we work in a single crochet, we need to add an additional six stitches. So to go from round one to round two, at round two, our radius is going to be two times the height of a single crochet stitch. That means our circumference needs to be six times two times the height of a single crochet stitch. Another way of saying that is our circumference needs to be 12 times the height of a crochet stitch. 
Well, we know that the height of our crochet stitch is roughly the same as the width of the top of our crochet stitch. So our circumference needs to be 12 times the width of our crochet stitch, which means we need to work 12 single crochet stitches to get a circumference that is going to work for the circle and make it lay flat. So to go from round one to round two, we added six stitches. What about for round three? Round three, our radius is going to be the height of three single crochet stitches. That means our circumference needs to be six times three times the height of our crochet stitch. Or we could say 18 times the height of our crochet stitch. Since the height of a single crochet is roughly the same as the width of a single crochet, you guessed it, the circumference will be 18 times the width of a single crochet stitch, so 18 single crochet stitches around. The reason why we keep adding six is because of that two times pi. We're just calling it six for now to keep it simple. But our first radius is one times the height of a stitch. Our second radius, because it's two rows, it's gonna be twice the height of a stitch. Third row, because it's three rounds, it's three stitches tall, so our radius is three times the height of a single crochet. And the height of a single crochet is roughly the width of a single crochet. Now that explanation is probably satisfactory for most of you, but some of y'all like me, if you're very rigorous about math, which math is a very precise and rigorous endeavor, you're probably sitting there going, yeah, but pi isn't just three. Pi is 3.14159265357575, blah, blah, blah. A little amount like 0.14 if we do it a whole bunch of times, it's gonna add up and it's gonna make a difference. So why does it work doing just six if pi is a little bit bigger than three? Here's the reason why. First of all, crochet is a fabric, meaning it has some stretch and give. So it has the ability to kind of stretch and adapt and be a little bit forgiving if our measurements aren't exactly exact. The second thing is, remember how I said the width of a single crochet tends to be just slightly bigger than the height of a single crochet? Well, that extra a little bit of width than the height makes up for that 0.1415, etc. A way to think about it is almost like we have two rounding errors that perfectly cancel each other out. Now, with all that said, here is the big takeaway. You might find that as you are crocheting circles and single crochet stitches, you are working six single crochet around, then 12, then 18, and each round you're adding six single crochet stitches, but your circles are not turning out flat circles. Based on the math, here's why that could be happening and how to fix it as well. If your single crochet stitch isn't the proper amount wider than it is tall, we're gonna run into rounding errors with that 0.14159, and it's gonna either create a dome or a ruffle. The way to fix this is simply changing your hook size. If you regularly struggle with this, here's what I would do. When you start your next project, first make a 10 single crochet by 10 rows little test swatch using the hook and yarn that you plan to use for your project. Then measure the width and the height of the swatch you made. If your 10 by 10 swatch turns out taller, then it is wide. That means your circumference is gonna be too narrow and instead of being a flat circle, your circumference is gonna be too small and it's going to create a dome shape. This means your hook is too small. You need to try using a larger hook size. If you make your 10 by 10 single crochet swatch and find out that it is way wider than it is tall, that means your circumference is gonna be too big for your radius and instead of creating a flat circle when you work six single crochet, it's gonna be roughly along the edge. This means your hook size is too big and you need to go to a smaller hook size. The goal is to end up with something like this little swatch here that I made in blue, where it is approximately the same width as it is the same height when I work 10 stitches by 10 rows, but my width is just ever so slightly bigger than my height. So if you don't care about the math at all or you didn't understand the math at all, that is totally okay. Here is what you need to know to fix your circles. If working six does not work out, you need to change your hook size. If you're getting a dome, go with a bigger hook size. If you're getting a ruffle where it's too much fabric at the edge, you need to go with a smaller hook size. I wanted to keep this video short, but you know, math is just too exciting. I can't stop talking about it. But I'm going to try to briefly talk about how this applies to other stitches like the double crochet and the half double crochet. The double crochet is approximately two times as tall as it is wide. So when we work our first round of double crochet, we can think of the radius as the height of a double crochet stitch. Again, using three for pi, our circumference is going to be six times the radius, so it's going to be six times 
the height of a double crochet stitch. Now the height of a double crochet stitch is about twice as tall as it is wide. So that means our circumference needs to be six times twice the width of a stitch. Another way to say that is our circumference needs to be 12 times the width of a double crochet stitch. That means we need to work 12 double crochet stitches in round one, so that way we get a circle that lays flat. Round two in double crochet, our radius is going to be twice the height of a double crochet stitch. That means our circumference needs to be six times two times the height of a double crochet stitch or 12 times the height of a double crochet stitch. Now we know that the height of a double crochet stitch is twice the width of the top of a double crochet stitch. So that means our circumference needs to be 12 times twice the width of a double crochet stitch or 24 times the width of a double crochet stitch. Another way to put that, for round two, our circumference needs to be 24 double crochet stitches wide. We essentially end up getting a multiple of 12 to find our circumference, and that tells us how many stitches we need. So if I am on round 72 of a circle and I'm working in double crochet, to know how many stitches I need to get a flat circumference, I'm going to do 12 times 72. That will give me my value. Same concept, the math is a little bit more messy because we get into decimals, with half double crochet. How many do we need for half double crochet? A half double crochet is about one and a half times as tall as it is wide. So for round one when working in half double crochet, our radius is going to be the height of a half double crochet stitch. So our circumference will be six times the height of a half double crochet stitch. Now the height of our half double crochet stitch is about one and a half times the width of our half double crochet stitch. That means our circumference needs to be six times one and a half times the width of a half double crochet stitch. Six times one and a half gives us nine. So for round one, our circumference needs to be nine times the width of a half double crochet stitch. So we need to work nine half double crochets for round one. Same thing applies for round two. And yes, you guessed it. You'll need to add an additional nine stitches because the radius for round two is twice the height of a half double crochet. That means our circumference is six times two times the height of a half double crochet or 12 times a half double crochet height. And since our height is about one and a half times the width of a half double crochet, our circumference needs to be 12 times one and a half times the width of a half double crochet, which means our circumference needs to be 18 times the width of a half double crochet. So we need to work 18 half double crochets for round two. The big overarching takeaway is double crochets. You add 12 more stitches each round. Half double crochets, you add nine more stitches each round. If your project is a dome, your hook size is too small, go to a bigger hook size. If your project is roughly, when you use these numbers, your hook is too big, go down to a smaller hook size to get a flat circle. I know that was probably a lot. Some of y'all were probably totally geeking out about this. Some of y'all were probably like, oh, I feel like I'm back in high school again. But either way, I appreciate y'all letting me geek out about two of my favorite things, math and crochet. And I hope these troubleshooting tips help you to create better projects in the round. All right, I'll stop rambling. Happy crafting. Really quick, I want to give a big thank you to all of y'all. Y'all have got my channel to 60,000 subscribers. What? I am still planning to make that 50,000 subscribers celebration video. My health has just not been cooperating. That's still in the works, but I want to say a huge thank you guys so much for continuing to support my channel. I can't wait to see where we all end up on this crazy YouTube adventure.